Good day. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Hendersonville and the Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina, where the mountains embrace the sky, the waterfalls cleanse the soul, and the friendship warms the heart. My name is Chuck Elston, and I will serve as the worship associate for the service today. The UU Fellowship is an inclusive community of faith for all ages. We gather in covenant to celebrate life in all its joy and mystery, inspire journeys of truth and meaning, and engage in practice and service for love, justice, and peace. Here you can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, your expansive heart. We are a welcoming congregation, and we welcome folks of all sexual orientation and gender identities. We are dedicated to making the world a better place, and we invite you to join us. For more information, please go to our website at uufhnc.org. And please join us at 11.30 this Sunday morning via Zoom for Stones of Compassion and conversations relating to today's message. The flaming chalice, which represents our faith, symbolizes a beacon of hope. We light this chalice as a symbol of the creativity of our liberal faith the creativity to explore new avenues of religious thought, the creativity to develop a caring community, and the creativity to envision a world of peace and freedom. Our opening reading is from the civil rights icon, John Lewis. Do not be lost in a sea of despair. Do not become bitter or hostile. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble necessary trouble. We will always find a way to make a way out of no way. Our centering words are from the poet Jula'adad Muhammad Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if you're there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house of all this furniture, still treat each guest honorably. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our favorite guest speaker, Dr. Mark Mullinex. This will be Mark's 20th appearance, 20th appearance at the UU Fellowship. He is professor of religion at Mars Hill University. His courses include religion in Appalachia, Hinduism and Buddhism, and Angels and Demons. His forthcoming book, Tao Te Ching, Power for the Peaceful, will be published late this year or early next by Fortress Press. Order a copy. His book is truly powerful and beautiful. You will find it both compelling and insightful. Mark remains a joyful Baptist, even though he has considered all the facts. Hi, it's good to see you, good to be back. Do you remember sports? Do you remember being six feet close to strangers and not feeling strange? Remember some of us commuting to work, flying, hugs, gassing your car up every week? Remember movie theaters? My last four appointments with health provi providers were done online and we're still in the early days of this pandemic. 
Our society is in huge changes at this moment. These times of upheaval may remind us of those times in our own lives when we were forced to change as individuals. Losses of a loved one, a career, loss of dream, loss of an ability, loss of immobility, loss of identity. It feels like to me that the unfamiliar and the new invades our living space and rearranges everything from family to schedules to work. Upheaval just kind of makes itself at home like an unwelcome guest. Being honest now, we don't want the unfamiliar to become normal. We want to go back to where we were, to that moment where that thing called COVID-19 was not yet here. Who would like to go back to early February with me? Anybody? February was fine, but it's not coming back. March came and we mourned what was a loss of what's been normal, like impromptu restaurant meals with friends or visiting loved ones in hospitals or care facilities, planning travel, poof, all gone, withered. Maybe it's helpful to think of our pandemic and our crises through Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's now famous stages of grief. We might find ourselves somewhere in the five dimensions of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. I'm using John O'Donohue's Blessings for a Friend Upon the Arrival of Illness as our text for the day. And in my meditation, I'm going to intersperse John's words with mine. Here's how his blessing begins. And you may want to close your eyes for a moment. Now is a time of dark invitation beyond a frontier you did not expect. Abruptly, your old life seems distant. Now your time on earth becomes full of threat. Before your eyes, your future shrinks. Now this dark companion has come between you. Distance have opened up in your eyes. You feel that against your will, a stranger has married your heart. Nothing before has made you feel so isolated and alone. In just its first few weeks, the threat of this dark companion of a pandemic made all the fault lines, injustices and inequalities that define our societies impossible to ignore. The pandemic has not just impacted us, it has revealed who we are. The strengths and weaknesses of our connections to self, with loved ones, and among our communities. So far in 2020, we've seen at least two crises in the United States already. COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter demonstrations, both of which have already led to wide systemic changes and social shifts. This nation's response to the COVID-19 pandemic showed perhaps they were not all that united as states. Frontline workers paid below living wage. Conspiracy theories, not science. George Floyd was mur murdered by asphyxiation, but our black brothers and sisters are dying 40% more often than others from this pandemic that makes it hard to breathe. The new reality shows that the old normal wasn't working very well. Rest in peace, old normal. Police brutality against black Americans emerged as a second national necessary conversation, compelling us to take to the streets to demand change or for some to retreat back into our old normal patterns of racism. The car tires of my daughter's car was slashed this week, along with all some of her other neighbors who had Black Lives Matter signs in their front yards. The police spokesperson suggested that if they just had their All Lives Matters sign up, up, up and posted, then maybe they would not have had the trouble. Sigh. So maybe the old normal wasn't that good in the first place. As a recent poem by Bear Peterson puts it, I'm trying to find my new normal. I've got to find one because I really need a new normal, you see. My old nor normal never was. My normal has never been normal. No, it's never been normal at all. So let's admit it. Maybe we have done things badly, even wrongly. We have constructed or participated in a world that is wounding and death-dealing, traumatic and terrorizing, in need of transformation. Our balloons of innocence need puncturing. We need to paw awake from our sleepwalking. 
So back to Mr. O'Donohue. When the reverberations of shock subside in you, may grace come to restore you to balance. May it shape a new space in your heart to embrace this illness as a teacher who has come to open your life to new worlds. May you find in yourself a courageous hospitality towards what is difficult, painful, and unknown. O'Donoghue, O'Donoghue asks if we can find within us a courageous hospitality for the new. Why? Well, we cannot change the future coming at us, but what if we bow towards the future and partner with it, with courageous hospitality? So what's on the horizon of the future? Where will courage and hospitality take us and be required? Remote work is probably here to stay less driving. There will continue to be multiple options for worship service, movies, eating out. These will all remain. Second, what was once unthinkable will probably become commonplace. Our new normals will require, require us to be more flexible, more limber, so we can more quickly pivot from one direction to the other without pulling all our social muscles. Three, we'll have to learn how to listen to more people. The new normal will include whomever we're not hearing or seeing now. And as we listen more, more inequities will emerge. The truths we have heard recently emerged only got there because the suffering were able to speak. But there will be more, and these voices will be local. If you have money to invest, consider investing in Hendersonville's local truth-telling presses, because all suffering begins local. Get our local stories out. The condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak. The new normal can include more courageous hospitality for truth-telling. Mr. O'Donohue's teaching is that we treat these times as a teacher or as a coach, exposing us, training us, reshaping us, and giving us a new resilience for the future. Let's see what else Mr. Do uh, Mr. O'Donohue has for us. May you use this illness as a lantern to illuminate the new qualities that will emerge in you. May your fragile harvesting of this slow light help you release whatever has become false in you. May you find the wisdom to listen to your illness. Ask it why it came, why it chose your friendship, where it wants to take you, what it wants you to know, what quality of space does it want to create in you. What do you need to learn to become more fully yourself, that your presence may shine in the world? When I was small, I was taken by my parents to the ocean for the very first time. Since I knew how to swim, my dad quickly took me out to the breakers, and together we dodged and we ducked waves for about 10 minutes, but I was getting tired. So finally, I shouted over the waves to him, Dad, make it stop for a moment so I can get used to it. Then my dad, the unwitting Buddhist monk that he was, demonstrated that you go with the waves' movements. Make friends with the waves. Don't fight them. My dad was my first surfing instructor. Don't fight the friend. I may not be able to change something directly today, but I can influence things by befriending them. When I see my so-called problems recast as future friends, wanting to take me somewhere and teach me and create a whole new quality of space within me so I can be more fully myself, whoa, that is a powerful reframing of the new normal. In that vein, my dear Unitarians of Hendersonville, let me call on you and us to become a shining presence in the life of Hendersonville or wherever you may be. First, sow seeds. Now, Seeds will not grow unless first we sow them. Of course, there is no guarantee they'll sprout. But the sowers of the seeds to end the Atlantic coast and the Keystone XL pipelines were patient, seeding the ground with their tears, their laments, and their protests. And look what happened last month. Nothing will happen if we do not sow. So what new seeds do we plant? Our seeds are how we invest our time, our vision, our commitment, and resources. Whether one is teaching a child to read or 
dismissing that same child as unimportant, seeds are being planted nevertheless. Nothing we do for others is ever wasted. Second, stay vulnerable and teach the art. Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Hendersonville is already known as a risk-taking congregation on behalf of the voiceless. Can you become still more famous for your listening abilities? Many poor people's stories are not told in faith settings these days, but you have a good history of bringing them in. Enlarge your tent even more, being more willing to be converted by the future's unheard stories. This is what you shall do, said Walt Whitman. Love the earth, sun, animals, despise riches, give to everyone who asks, stand up for the stupid and the crazy, devote your income and labor to others, hate tyrants, practice patience with the powerful, uneducated persons, dismiss whatever insults your soul, and your flesh, very flesh will become a great poem. Stay vulnerable. Third, stay courageous and teach X arts. Courage is hope in action. Hope is a thing with feathers, said Emily Dickinson. Take your wings and fly with courage into the storms. Demonstrate in Hendersonville that these are days for adventurous faith. Call out by name all that junk that is in the way. You know, all that moral sludge that slows down justice and prevents love. Remain that congregation where folks just don't fit in, but they belong with you. I mean, truly belong. Belonging is a spiritual practice and is a rare thing. Giving space to those not listened to, not believed, and who have been rendered silent is not popular among many spiritual houses these days. And I think you have what the new normal is going to require. Bring people together, mix it up, diversify, Provide radical welcome to the full range of voices. You know, people are very hard to hate once you see them close up. The greatest act of courage is to be vulnerable with someone with whom you disagree. Bring the full range of voices into your sanctuary. We are not here to do so much conflict resolution, but conflict transformation. To remain relevant, to remain relevant, we must bring people together rather than opt out of our comfort zone month after month. Finally, love truth. Nurture it. Keep your back straight, but your fronts soft. Keep your hearts wild, but your minds active. Cheer up the oppressed and horrify the despots. John O'Donohue ends his blessing this way. May you keep faith with your body. Learn to see it as a holy sanctuary, which can bring this night wound gradually towards the healing and freedom of dawn. And that's your genius, Unitarians of, of Hendersonville. You see bodies. Keep your faith with all bodies, white, gay, lesbian, trans, Democrat, Republican, fundamentalist. Each is a holy sanctuary. In their liberation and in their healing lies our own. That is, on the other side of their liberation and healing, we find our collective new normal. There can be no new normal peace for us unless there is peace for all of us. My friends, I think of you as the first violinist in a, in a great symphony orchestra of spirituality in Hendersonville. You come out on stage first and you play that first A440 note and the orchestra t tunes to your leading note. What is your note? Love is your key signature. Love's frequency is faith. Love's reach is as wide as mercy. For the new normal is going to require that we become even more human. We need to be as human as possible as we wrestle with the forms of death the old normal has served up uneven health care, disproportionate housing, unequal education, unthinking discrimination, our empire proclivities, and our eat or be eaten economies. Be that self-donating, self-giving people who know how to cry 
and cry with and cry out. We need soul stirrers. We need Hendersonville stirrers. People maladjusted to injustice today and tomorrow. We are ancestors in training. Let us use this unique moment to leave this world better than it is. For it is a new world with new rules. Let's get out there and model just love and right living and help shape our new normal. May it be so. Thank you. Go in peace. Go in kindness. Go in love. Go in faith. Leave the day, the day behind us. Day is done. Go in grace. Let us go into the dark, not afraid and not alone. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Let us hope by some good pleasure safely to arrive at home. <laughs>